All right, what's up guys? If you are new here, thank you for checking out my channel. I hope you will stick around and subscribe to the channel and stay up to date on my future videos. So today we're gonna be discussing some Windows 10 tips and tricks. Um, these are gonna range from very basic to intermediate level, so you don't have to be a computer genius here to learn something. And even if you are, stick around and hopefully you will learn something that you can use. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing I wanna go over is the start menu customization. So go ahead and start by clicking on the start menu. And as you can see here, we have several different uh, things here. Um, I don't really carry keep a lot of uh, icons on my start menu, but the way you're going to add things to the start menu is just by uh, looking over here in your list. Let's say I want to uh, add Adobe. Um, let's let's just do Lightroom. You can right click on the icon there and click Pin to start. And we're going to go ahead and add Photoshop as well. So right click and pin to start. So as you can see, right here we have our two icons. You can simply drag those to any other area that you'd like. And now you have them side by side. If I hover right above the icons themselves on the start menu, I can actually give it a title. So Adobe. And let's say we want to make these smaller. We can actually right click on the icon and click resize, go from medium to small. We'll right click this one, resize, and go to small. And now I can drag these around and you can fit many more icons or you know applications pinned right to your start menu right from there. Uh, the other thing you'll notice here is I actually have the file explorer, pictures, downloads, and documents off to the left side here of my start menu. So to get those there, by default, you they're not there. You have to click on settings. And once you're in settings, you're gonna to go to personalization. And once in personalization, you're gonna go right over to start. And as you can see here, this is pretty much all default out of the box. I have not changed anything. If you want, you can click use start full screen. And basically it's gonna use up like it says, almost all of the screen for your start menu. Uh, I do have that turned off. But what we're gonna do to get the folders that I have listed is click choose which folders appear on start. So here you can actually uncheck, you know, whatever, if you want some of these off, you can feel free to do that. But I turned on File Explorer, Settings, Documents, Downloads, and Pictures. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on Videos just so we can see what that looks like and we'll close out of here. If we go back down to the start menu, now I have one more little icon here for videos, so if I click on that, then I go right to my videos folder. So it's just a quick little way for you to customize your start menu and make it easier for you to access some of your, your most accessed folders and uh, programs. The next thing I'm gonna jump right into is the default apps. By default, Windows 10 will want you to use Edge as your web browser, and they also use Edge to uh, open up PDFs. So that's a problem for a lot of people, for me especially. So if you go to Start Menu, you can get there a couple of different ways. You can click on Settings, and you can go to this Apps icon, and then you can go to Default Apps. Uh, the way that I prefer to get around and navigate inside of Windows 10, though, is actually just to click on the Start Menu and start typing. Right after you click on the Start Menu, just start typing what you're looking for. So Default and then as you can see right here in the first best match is gonna be default app settings. Just click right there and email. You can just click on this and if you have a third party email like Outlook or Thunderbird, you can choose that. Um, I'm just gonna leave it on mail as the default web browser. Uh, here I changed it from Edge to Chrome and specifically to open uh, PDFs with Adobe Reader, you have to install Adobe Reader and then go to set defaults by app once this loads, you'll see Adobe Acrobat right here. Click on Manage. And PDF, you're going to change this. By default, it's set to Edge. You're just going to click on it and then click Adobe Acrobat. And now your PDFs will be opened inside of the uh, Adobe Acrobat software. Same thing if you want to change you know, um, iTunes or something like that to be your default media player. Just click on it, click Manage. And once this loads all the file extensions, you can tell it to open up, you know, MP3s, MP4s, and whatnot using iTunes. So that's how you're going to change your default apps in Windows 10. Okay, a couple of uh, easy things that have actually thrown some of my customers for a loop. If you go down to the bottom right-hand corner of your screen where your notifications are, um, actually you'll see if this is collapsed on you, 
you only have a handful, but go ahead and click expand. You'll see tablet mode. If we put the computer in tablet mode, this is intentional for those of you that may have a touchscreen version of Windows 10 on a laptop and you want to use it like a tablet. That's great. This is more user friendly for you here because it's, it's designed for you to be able to touch the screen. But on a desktop, if you accidentally click that and you don't know that you have it enabled, um, you're not going to actually see the files on the desktop. As you can see here, there's nothing there. So the way you get that is again right down here, this little notifications window. You click on that and that's how you're going to turn on or off tablet mode. And right next to it is going to be uh, airplane mode. I've actually had clients enable airplane mode, which is just like a phone. If you do that, you are not able to get online. So it's going to throw you for a loop right there. And you can see this little airplane icon, wireless communication is turned off. So if we go back over to here, you see it's lit up blue. You can actually click on it one more time. And now airplane mode is disabled and our Wi-Fi has now just reconnected. Okay, so another setting that's been around for a long time is called power options. And Windows 8 and Windows 10, you can actually just right click right on the start menu and you get all these options to um, you know, quickly get to where you're looking to go. So my favorite way, instead of going through control panel, is just to cl right click on the start menu, go straight to power options. This is a desktop PC, but if you have a laptop, you'll have more options here. Um, basically for when you're on battery power or when you're plugged in. So you have two sets of options. For me, I like to take, uh, change my screen to never turn off and the computer never to go to sleep. If I want to turn it off, I'll just turn the power off on my monitor and shut down the PC or manually put it to sleep. So that's how you can keep your computer from actually going to sleep on you after a certain min uh, you know 10 minutes or whatever of inactivity. Uh, the other thing that may um, cause your computer to go to sleep real quick as a bonus tip. If you click on the start menu and start typing screen, you can see change screen saver is an option. We're going to go there. Um, right now I have none, but if you if you click this on resume display login screen, basically after one minute of inactivity, the computer is going to lock. Some people may like that, but others that I've actually helped in the past find that to be a nuisance. So make sure that's unchecked and that you don't have a screen saver if you, if you don't want one. And if you do, feel free to go ahead and enable that and set it to however many minutes you would like. Okay, so the command prompt versus PowerShell. In the newest versions of Windows 10, if you right click on the start menu, you'll see that you have Windows PowerShell right here, which it looks blue, but basically it works the same as the command prompt. So you can do pretty much anything you can think of like IP config, there you go. You can actually get right in and, and see everything. Let's see, we'll do a GP update. So just about anything you can, you can do inside of the command prompt, you can do right into the PowerShell as well. So that's the way that I like to get to it. The other way is just to click on the start menu. You can type CMD and there you go. Um, you're into your command prompt. Um, if we go CMD and then right click on it, we can actually pin this to start, going back to the beginning of the video. So now if I click on the start menu, uh, my command prompt, where is it? Right here. So I can drag it anywhere I want and then right above it, I can you know give it a heading if I want. So that way it just stands out a little bit more easily. So now it's right there, I can just click on it. So pretty quick, I can push the Windows key on the keyboard, which a lot of people don't use instead of clicking on the start menu. So Windows key on the keyboard and then start or command prompt. So it's just an easier way. You can two hand it. So you're not just doing everything with your right hand moving the mouse. Uh, for people like me who are working on computers, you know, using two hands at once, I can, I can get there just so much faster. As you can see, it's just a lot easier to get around. So in Windows 10, you have this settings option. So inside of settings here, this is kind of like the Metro version of control panel. Um, I don't find it as efficient as control panel. Maybe that's because I'm used to the good old fashioned control panel. I do prefer to work out a control panel, but inside of here, if I click on devices, for example, then I can go to printers and scanners. This will show you technically anything and everything that's connected to your PC. Um, but to get to the act actual control panel, you do have to do some digging. So if you click on the start menu and then just start typing control, there you go. You got your control panel. Just go ahead and click on that. 
And here is the good old fashioned control panel that everyone knows and loves. And here's our devices and printers. This is what I prefer to do when I'm adding a printer or something else that's plugged into the computer. I like to look and see this because it's what I'm used to, it's what I, I know, and it's what I love. So settings versus control panel. Um, use whatever you feel comfortable with by all means. I highly dislike this version of the Metro interface that they're trying to force people to use. They hide the control panel for some reason, but uh, you know maybe because it's more powerful and you can do more damage there than you can here. But I, for one, prefer to work on the actual control panel, but uh, just know you can get to the same stuff through settings or just type control panel. And that'll get you to the good old fashioned control panel. Okay, so let's talk about colors and themes. So what you see right now on my desktop is pretty much what every, most PCs will look like out of the box with Windows 10. Um, in order to change that, if you click on your start menu, click on settings, Right up here, you're going to see personalization. You can change your lock screen, but really what we're going to talk about right now are colors. So right now, mine is has nothing set, but if I click, for example, that teal, and then click Start Taskbar and Action Center, it'll show that accent color. So right away, what you can see right down here on the taskbar is it changed the, the taskbar to a blue, and if I open up my File Explorer, then now it puts this nice color up here. So you can easily get back to settings and just change that to whatever color you want uh, to fit your personal liking. And that'll give you a little bit of flair to your PC. Then you can, of course, right click and click on personalize here. And you can change your, you know, to a, your background to a picture of your liking. And that'll be how you can actually get in and customize your computer. So now I've got mine back to just out of the box, plain old boring windows. And the last thing that I want to mention is how to get to the task manager. So the way that I was taught and the way many of you may have been taught was to just press control alt delete on the keyboard. And now you get this option here to lock, switch user sign out or task manager. So that's how you get to the task manager, the good old fashioned way. Um, but the way that I like to do it is actually just to go down to the, to the uh, task bar and right click on a vacant area. You can't right click on an icon right click on any of vacant area and then click task manager. So that's the fastest way to get and look and see all of the processes that are running. You can get to your performance here. You can see you know all the detailed specs. So right now I'm utilizing 5% of my CPU. It gives me more info on the CPU. And you can go to startup. So here's a bonus tip on some um, optimization features. So Inside of startup, these are all the services that are going to start whenever I log into my PC or whenever I boot it up. You can see the status is disabled. I've gone through and disabled a lot of these, but if I want to re-enable them, I can just click on it and then click enable. So basically, any of these extra programs like Adobe, uh, LogMeIn, um, these are things that I don't want to run whenever I start my computer. Um, you just want to be careful. You don't want to turn everything off you know if you need it like the Realtek HD audio manager I like to keep that on um, because that's related to the speakers um, and then last but not least if you click on the start menu go into MS config okay that's gonna pull up the system configuration inside of here instead of normal startup go to selective startup and then go to services and then hide all Microsoft services we're gonna click there and these are services that, again, are going to be running from the moment you log into your PC. So if I've unchecked uh, several of these. And from that point, basically, it's going to stop them from running the next time you log into your PC. And then you click OK, and it's going to prompt you to exit with, without a restart or go ahead and restart for the changes to take effect. All right, guys, so I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you found something useful in this video or learned something, feel free to comment down below and please subscribe to my channel because that will really help me out. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next video.